students to benefit the most right whether a teacher is experienced whether a teacher is new these principles are common to every teacher how you use what are the subject that are based is left to the discretion of the concerned teacher he or she so the already we have done three principles now this is fourth effective teaching practice this is taking from concrete to abstract right now abstract in the sense something which you cannot define something which you cannot express for example if you tell uh, children see lot of happiness makes your world children will think how much you cannot uh, you, you just said you are happy that makes your world that makes your day you will say then children will think how much happy i should be it cannot be measured in quantity hence always you should ensure that you should use micro words words which children are familiar with objects which children are familiar with you have to start with even at age of where you are teaching for graduation pg students also you have to talk in those words which they are familiar with use a word which they are unfamiliar with definitely it puts them in confusion hence always move from micro words words which are very simple which have no other meaning and then go to complex words now for example when i say big students might be able to small students would be able to reflect suppose if we are moving towards middle school then we can use a word like large they may be able to assimilate but this large if i use with a class of 5 they would not be able to understand because for them large means huge as a mountain as you move towards college your word should be huge for intermediate level same thing when we are going to a degree level this big large and huge is very small for them word is big but for them assimilation is small hence use a big word like for example gigantic now they will realize oh gigantic means it's very very huge how much huge we need not tell because at that age they will be able to understand those complex terms so always move from micro words simple words to complex words next one is the teacher should always go from particular to general right you cannot generalize anything you have whatever you are talking you should come straight to the point for the students to understand what our criteria is first you have to give them lot of examples you have to show them yes this is what the topic is this is what on which laws are related now for example we are talking about say laws of gravitation unrelated to our subject right the teacher is moving away from the topic so what you have to do when you are telling law of gravitation first you should instead of telling who newton is what he has done about the three laws children do not know who newton is but if you say see one day a boy was sitting under an uh, apple tree then uh, the apple fell down you should ask them why the apple did not go up why did it come down they will start thinking their mind will become curious they will understand i think there is some logic involved then they will ask you what is the reason at that time you did not think about why apple fell down it did not go up okay it is because of that this also is a very good question any tree if you sit also the question would have been same he has selected to apple tree it could have been an orange tree a guava tree or a mango tree also but the result would be same na so it means it is based on some type of law it means there is gravitational pull to the earth you can say we are all standing why we are not falling down it means there is a force of gravitation so by giving examples we have given them two important concept of gravitational force an example of a person who discovered it newton an example how it was discovered now they will be able to understand your explanation but first only if you say earth is having gravitational pull earth is a big magnet means they think how first of all they do not know what magnet is also whether magnet has two poles so make them stand give them examples north and south if they have to reach what they should do from north they should come to south at this particular point to meet each other so they know oh this is the point they are talking about this is what magnet is this is what it attracts by giving examples the teacher should move towards explanation after they have thoroughly explained then come to experiment then go for demo some uh, usually there is a general tendency for uh, teachers who are new to put the chart on the board children keep on looking at the chart chart will not explain to the students so ultimately the teacher has to first go with examples apply the general laws then you show the demonstration first you explain everybody is very clear now if you are teaching in a small concept like directions right how you are going to teach them okay then
ओके राइट एंड वी हैव डेमो वी हैव शोन दैट डेमो द हैंड मूवमेंट द एक्सप्लेनेशन मूवमेंट आर लेटर दिस इज वॉट यू हैव जस्ट नाउ डन इज डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन यू टोल दम टू डू ना दे विल नॉट डू बिकॉज दे डोंट नो वॉट इज लेफ्ट एंड राइट इफ दे वुड हैव अ नोन दे वुड नॉट हैव सैट देर ना सो यू शुड हैव डन सो एज ए टीचर वॉट यू शुड डू टेक टू स्टूडेंट्स make them stand four at least or use only one student ask them to show the demo so that all the 50 will see if everybody is busy doing the demo then each other would only see and laugh the class would become uh, commoted there would lot of confusion in the class hence allow the demonstration to be done by the teacher you take a object or you take a student tell them to remove his left hand and ask them everybody to follow suit ask them to remove the right hand ask them to stretch straight show them the direction where east you are saying right other examples which they can identify daily where does the sun rise till now ha it is east if you are teaching states then you can talk about the northeastern states of arunachal pradesh to assam right if you are saying what is the uh, uh, what is the direction that is opposite to east then now they will know west you can ask them about where is himalayas which is on top of india that is north opposite to that north would be south anything which they are familiar now all are from south states so you have to tell them something which they are relating to so we are all in south opposite to our direction is north if you are teaching in north class and tell them where we are in south means they will not understand so relate to them with examples go with explanation then show your demonstration right whichever class it is even at pg level also the situation is same whole to part gestalt psychologist proved this point that first we see the whole then only we can see the different parts right for example when somebody tells about i ophthalmologist right i doctor is there when he wants to see the eye will can we go only with the eye no it is first the whole and then the part so a psychologist have proved again and again that teachers also should first go with the introduction without going with the topic suddenly we start with it they will not know so first give the topic go with the gist of what you are going to do in that particular topic skeletal sketch then allow them to do suppose for example if you have to teach in science leaves uh, say fruits branches roots stem right separate separately if you say you have to show them five parts right instead now when they look at the tree they will know oh the green one which is holding it is the stem the one which is fluttering by is the leaf which is green in color now you can explain them this is the leaf and what bears this leaves which is the food factory is the fruit right those which are dry which leaves are hanging are the branches right how does the tree what is that which you cannot see they will only say it is the roots and then which is holding it is the stem so in this way you have explained the concept also part part but what they have allowed to visualize the whole same way teacher whenever you are going to the class your first thing should be to describe them overview of the topic then you can explain them individual concept next one is psychological to logical this is again proved by people that whenever toddlers are there you should always they you have to teach them in the initial stages this logical part you should apply when they are the learners now for you we can give you practical examples even though you know that it is not possible we can tell you that it could be possible but for toddlers who are in the initial stages psychologically you cannot scare them psychologically you cannot say that they cannot do it now suppose uh, you are moving away from your uh, subject matter say you are into management and you are into engineering suppose even if i say that yes yes science is very difficult for you now you will be able to understand your strength and weakness so you are ready to accept logically for learners but as those who are in the initial schooling stages for them lot is there to learn so you cannot tell them maths is very difficult you just skip it so right from the beginning without starting only they will ensure that oh i think this is difficult so i ensure that psychologically you teach toddler only what they can take in when grown up learners are there teach something which they can understand whatever you tell here even for pg children also you should be very careful because for them also their mind is still ready to accept an, uh, something if you say no then it me it creates a sense of doubt for them 
suppose if UGC net is there, I'll say it, no, no, it's extremely difficult. I think it's impossible. Three percent only pass percentage. In that three percent, you could be one. So always you should ensure that logically for grown-up learners also you should sum up the situation. You cannot negatively move back from the topic. Analysis to synthesis. Here, this is all the students. First criteria of a teacher is telling them what the problem is, dividing the problem into parts to find a solution. Whenever you look at a problem, you find that the problem is very huge. But break down the problem. Now, for example, if you have to study six subjects, you find it is as difficult as a mountain to climb. Right? Out of this, three subjects are my strength. I have understood thoroughly. No need to study. I can go and write like that. Right? Two subjects, if I practice, I will get. One subject only is my problem. So, your problem has come to one from six. Now, your concentration is only on the weakness. Same way, whatever topic you are doing, identify those which are very difficult. Take it out separately. First, make ensure that mix the easy with the difficult topic. You might be thinking, what is that? Textbook is there, na? I can just go and uh, take out the textbook and tell them. But they have to sum up. You have to understand that as students of that level, even at graduation level, there are some difficult tasks, there are some easy and average. Some uh, Mix it up. Every day don't teach the difficult task which makes them think that this topic itself is difficult. Go with the mixture where you can ensure that easy ones, oh they will think, oh so easy it is. Their concentration level peps up. Interest will develop. Go for a difficult one. Then go for an average one. From here to synthesis. This is higher order thinking. In a question paper, if you see, out of 10 questions, 2 are there which are hearts. Higher order thinking skill. Not the hearts which you are thinking. Understanding it by connecting the dots. You are you have already have the knowledge. What you are doing, you are trying to use that knowledge. You are trying to understand through analysis how I can solve it. Whatever problem is come to a student will not come to a professional. Suppose how professional will handle the problem, he will not break the problem. For him, he will find for this problem, how many solutions I have, which is the best one for me. This he is able to do, pick up the best solution because he has already amassed knowledge. He has already connected the dots and he knows this could be the solution. Now to put out the fire, right, there is immediately a fire. If we are here in analysis level, school stage or uh, college stage, everybody would run away. But among them, some three or four would stand by, they will inform the principal. They will, from that one will take out uh, anybody's mobile and inform the fire brigade. That one only would be able to go here. Synthesis. Similarly, now we have seen Texas shooting. Police were just standing outside the gate. But two clever students, they just informed uh, the level of administration. They said all are standing out and here already 19 students are killed along with one teacher. Then they came in. So it means there would be one who would know what problem is there, what solution is best. So synthesis, teacher only should help. If a problem is there after your learning takes place, then you should find a solution. In this level, you should tell them, break down your problem, then come to a solution. Here you should not say, as a professional, you cannot give them the advice at PG level. Ah, don't worry, break down the problem. Employer will say, go home. Because you are taking 10 days to give solution. A strike is going on in the office. Can you break down the problem? Go with the research and think that, ha, huh, might be pay. No, no, infrastructure, production. By the time you come, 10 days production is lost. So there you have to offer immediate solution. So this explanation should be given by the teacher only. This should be done by the student. So sitting in the exam, your clue is understand the question from whose angle they are asking. If it's methodology, it is teacher. If it is who should do it, student. Training of senses. Sense organs are absolutely important, right? Today, 50% is damaged by the time they are moving out of their 30s because over usage. Sight, hearing, taste, smell and touch are the common ones. Among them, these are the gateways of our knowledge, right? Why do we usually use that term, keep your ears open? Can we keep our ears open? But why do you use it? We feel... They should look with their eyes. We tell them, look at the board, look at the board. What is there in the board to look at? But we feel their concentration power would improve. When we say, hear up, we are, we are asking them to listen more thoroughly, more keenly. And particularly, when we say this touch, this is one of the best methods to, to ensure that students does better. How do you show appreciation? Some teachers have the habit beating it. 
हाँ पैटिंग है हाँ ओके दिस इज पैटिंग दिस इज हीटिंग नाउ ओके बाई द टाइम यू कुड स्ट्रेच इट दे बिकम हीटिंग यू जी सी इज नॉट अलविंग नो कॉर्पोरल पैनिशमेंट टू एनी स्टूडेंट नॉट इवन विद हैंड बट ऑल्सो विद माउथ यू कैन नॉट इवन यूज एनी डेरोगेटरी लैंग्वेज लैंग्वेज विच इज रॉन्ग टू बी यूज इन द क्लास ऑल्सो इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी ऑफेंस नव डेज स्टूडेंट्स कैन गो एंड कंप्लेन एंड नव डेज रेटिंग इज देर आफ्टर एवरी क्लास सो पर्टिकुलरली यू शुड बी केयरफुल सो दीज आर द गेट वेज ऑफ युअर नॉलेज टू पीपल प्रॉपुलराइज इज वन इज फ्रॉबल एंड दर इज मारिया मॉन्टेसेरी पर्टिकुलरली स्मॉल चिल्ड्रन यू सी हाउ डू दे एक्सप्लेन दैम दिस मॉन्टेसेरी किंडर गार्डन this concept of kg play school everybody has come from frobel and maria montessori they are very famous in this art of training of senses what a child has seen during the initial phases of uh, education they will never forget today also you will remember those rhymes those tables which they have taught but what you have studied from your intermediate to graduation level 80% is faded reason because we have not opened our gateways of knowledge and there was no sense of appreciation think about a teacher goes touches the students ensures that gives a handshake ensures that taps at the cheek the student gets appreciated no need to give a big praise of a letter until that you have done wonders so a small touch also ensures that learning take place so teachers quality why we are using this because one of the quality of a teacher is patience and kindness sympathetic towards a child if the child doesn't read also you should show the same affection a child who is a topper also it should be same ensuring that learning is equal to all encouragement of self study dalton was the biggest uh, 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 one uh, writer who stressed on self study that is what today we have evolved mostly project work worksheets and particularly after graduation whatever self study mainly noas is there national institute of open schooling igno has been a big propagator of this indira gandhi open